What's up, my little Linux boys and girls? I've been requested to do a Void Linux installation tutorial. Hey, I'm not looking down on anybody. If you are having difficulty installing this, I've got the I've got the video for you. Thanks for tuning in. So we're going to be doing the LXQT version of Void here. I'll make one for the Architect installation as well, but this is going to be a UEFI installation of LXQT Void Linux. So, first off, open up whatever terminal emulator your distribution of choice has. Obviously, the Architect installer is just going to boot you into a shell. On LXQT, it's Qterm. I will I'll make this nice and big. Okay, we're going to do sudo void installer. Hit return. Okay, no password for sudo. If you want to get into the root account of of the installer, the password is void linux no space all lowercase no dash no nothing just void linux all one word. Keyboard. We're gonna do u for us. Network. Just hit return. Hopefully you have DHCP on your network. If you don't, I don't know what happens. I've never tried that. Machine name. What do you want it to be on your network? Probably this. Also here for source, go to local. Uh, should default to it. They have a big exclamation mark warning on their website. Um, you might want to check that you're actually on UEFI, UEFI before you decide how you're going to do your installations. And the way that you can check that is by seeing if you have sys firmware EFI. So if I go sys firmware EFI, this is a real folder here. This folder exists. Uh, if you are in a, a BIOS boot, like a non-UEFI boot, this directory will not exist. So you're going to want to follow non-UEFI installation instructions, which this is not. So if you have that folder, which you probably do, your installer window would have looked a little bit different when you booted into the initial grub menu as well. Uh, it would say boot from first hard drive location or whatever. But we're UF, UEFI, we're part of the botnet. Locale, I'm going to be ENUS. You can hit the first letter of it. You can't type any further past that though. Okay, locale, ENUS, time zone, I'm in America, Vancouver. Root password, 1234, or whatever you want it to be. Root, uh, user account, basic as void user whatever description you want I'm gonna use one two three four for the password again uh, I usually don't add it to root this already has sudo access if you want it to have sudo uh, it already has sudo and all the rest of this stuff is set up in a way where you're probably gonna be happy with it uh, don't just if you're doing this on desktop make sure that it's part of audio and video but uh, yeah it's gonna be a part of all of this automatically so just hit OK bootloader I'm going to install it onto dev SDA. This is the only disk that I have. If you have additional disks, you may have more difficulty figuring this out. If you want a graphical representation of your system, this does not come with uh, this does not come with Gparted, which is the preferred way of checking things out really by most people. So if we go Gparted, we're not going to get anything, but we can do a sudo xpps install dash s y u uh, I know happy no capital S now these are the German repos all it's doing is grabbing the updated list of the packages we just want sudo xbps install gparted obviously you don't need this if you don't want gparted now I can do gparted And get a better visual representation of my discs. Like I said, I only have one. But if you if you want parted to figure things out beforehand, it's probably the best graphical way to do it. And you can also set up partition tables. I think this uses fdisk. Fdisk is kind of annoying to set up new partition tables if your disk isn't completely blank. You could do that through parted. Uh, but now that we're untangented, you don't need to do any of that. You don't need gparted if you don't want it. But uh, I'm just going to be setting it like that. Partitions. 
first disc. Now, this may be interesting information for you. If you are using a BIOS boot system and you want to boot through a GPT disk, just use MS-DOS based disks if you're, or MBR based disks instead of GPT if you're on BIOS boot. This is a UEFI installation, so I'm going to make sure my disk is GPT. I'm going to make a new 100 megabyte partition. Uh, do the smaller partition first, and then the rest you can have is free space. This is going to be my free space. For the boot partition, this is the UEFI boot partition, I'm going to go over to type and change this to not EFI system, but instead BIOS boot. This as Linux file system is fine. If you want swap, you can make a partition and change it to Linux swap and then set it as your swap point. But I think swap disks are kind of dead in 2020. Don't really need one. Dog, you probably have like 16 gigs of RAM. You're not going to be swapping anything. Uh, from here, go to write. Type the whole complete word yes, not just Y. And it should say partition table has been altered. From here, I can quit. Go to file system. Now here on dev SDA1, this is going to be my this is going to be my boot EFI partition, and it needs to be FAT32. If you would have read that section before, it explains all this to you. FAT32, this is going to be boot EFI as the mounting partition uh, mounting point, and dev SDA2. This is just going to be root. Uh, you can use ButterFS or ext4. What's the other one that people like? There's some other new thing that people like. Uh, I'm just going to use ButterFS because it seems like that's that's the way it is. Thank you, Oracle. Uh, then this is just going to be rooted right at the mounted right at root, and that's fine. Then I hit done. This is a little annoying. You might actually inside of the file system. It defaults to change instead of done, so if you're done, you're done. Then once that's done, you hit install. Uh-oh, careful everyone. You're going to write changes to the disk. You have potential to completely erase everything now. Well, you probably already did in the uh, fdisk configuration for partitions, but hit continue. Very nice thing about void is how fast it copies files over. Ta-da! Now it's installing the bootloader. Oh my god, we're done. You want to reboot? I sure do. Here we are in the grub menu. If you get the background, you probably booted back into the live USB. You don't want to boot into the live USB again. You want to boot into grub off of your hard drive. Here we are. We're booting in. And wow, look at that. One, two, three, four. That's uh that's light DM, right? In the login manager. Here we are. We're on the system. We've done it.